Today on Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, we are talking about mental clutter. Do you know what your mental clutter is? How is mental clutter hindering your everyday life? Is it possible to purge and reorganize mental clutter? Let's begin our month focusing on clearing clutter with Julie Caraccio podcast interviews. Ready to clear your clutter and share your gifts with the world? Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., join award-winning professional organizer, author, and certified life coach Julie Caraccio on clearing the clutter inside and out, as she teaches you how to navigate the waters to declutter your life. Julie Caraccio destroys the box and examines clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, energetic, relationships, health, finances, and more. This month focuses on interviews I've done on other podcasts. I like to share these interviews because I always think it's interesting to hear what other people have to ask about clutter. What are their questions? And hopefully it leads to some insights for you. I always get a lot of talking with others and I hope you do as well. I've also included take actions at the end of the interview. You didn't think I'd leave you without homework, did you? I have interviewed Rachel before about aromatherapy and extreme clutter, and it was a lot of fun having the tables turned. If you are a hoarder or know someone who is, check out her podcast, Horganize, that airs weekly on Sundays. Collectorcare.com for more information. Enjoy. You are now listening to Horganize with professional organizer and extreme cleaner Rachel Seavey. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., Rachel shares organizing tips and hacks. Rachel combines her experience, expertise, and compassion to help people learn new methods on how to deal with overwhelming clutter. Her media appearances include The Hoarders Show, The CBS Sunday Morning Show, and The Lady Brain Show. Take it away, Rachel. Hey, collectors. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Hoardganize podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Seavey. And today we are talking all about mental clutter. I am super stoked to have Julie Caraccio as my guest interview today. And she will be explaining exactly what is mental clutter and providing some tips and some help on what to do about it. Julie Caraccio lives in Raleigh, North Carolina with her husband, Tony, and their rescued black cats, Joey and Antonio. Julie is passionate about supporting people and creating the life they choose, deserve, and desire by releasing clutter in all areas, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Julie hosts the weekly podcast, Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out, and authored the How to Declutter Your Life course. Julie enjoys hiking, cooking and baking, alternative medicine and healing, supportive environmental and animal causes, and, love this one, she loves enjoying her woman cave, which is a bubble bath. I love that. Without further ado, here is my interview about mental clutter with Julie Caraccio. Julie, thank you so much for joining us today on the Horganized podcast. I have been dying to chat with you all about mental clutter. As professional organizers, we both know that clutter is not only physical. So what is mental clutter? Rachel, this is what I consider mental clutter. But first, thanks for having me on the show. I'm a huge fan of your organized podcast. I'll never be able to say that correctly, but you work with hoarders, which is great. I've learned a lot from you about extreme clutter. All right, mental clutter. Here's what I consider mental clutter to be. Stress, anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, frustration, exhaustion. Living in the past or living in the future? Fear and unclear goals and priorities. 
A cluttered mind has obsessive, unsettled, or repetitive thoughts. For some, it feels like their mind controls them or there's no off button. Most of us experience mental clutter, or as I like to say, monkey mind daily. I encourage your listeners to ask themselves, what's my mental clutter? Do you have obsessive thoughts? Ruminate on what you should have said? Are you always thinking about business? Do you spend hours picking apart something? I used to worry a lot about what I said, didn't say, what someone meant, if someone liked me, if they didn't like me, you get the picture. When I first started my business, I never gave my mind a break. There was always something to plan, think about, and do. My mental clutter was off the charts. I can totally understand and relate to that, Julie. I have so much mental clutter. Maybe I'll learn something from this podcast. It's so hard being a mom and a business owner and juggling appointments and school activities. It's it's really hard to just let go and have a clear mind. It is. It's a huge challenge. And the more that we have on our plate, the more of a challenge it is. How can mental clutter hinder daily life? Just like any form of clutter, physical, emotional, spiritual, or energetic, mental clutter can prevent us from creating the life we choose, deserve, and desire. If you are not clear on what's important, you can be wasting your mental energy by focusing on insignificant things. Sometimes we distract ourselves with unimportant tasks because we are afraid of something. If you know your priorities, it is easy to get that laser focus and disregard what doesn't matter. FutureMe.org can help you with goal setting and apps, goals on track, life tick also might be worthwhile for people to check out. We can miss life with mental clutter from social media or being glued to video games or our cell phone or Facebook. How many of you have or have, have or have been with someone who has to check their phone during dinner, a movie, watching TV? They are literally missing their life. It's been my experience that when that happens, most people are trying to avoid something. What happens if life throws you a curveball? Do you have a complete meltdown? get frustrated and stuck? Think about your everyday life. Do you go through it with purpose or are you easily distracted? Are you focused on your own life or more concerned about others? When we focus on others, how can we create the life we desire? I also want to mention procrastination because I view that as mental clutter. A lot of time people who have clutter and are disorganized procrastinate. Become aware of subtle ways you procrastinate, such as waiting for the right time or for everything to be perfect before starting or beginning an important task and shortly afterwards distracting yourself with another task. The more aware of how you procrastinate, the easier it will be to recognize and overcome. Awareness is half the battle. Sometimes we don't realize we're procrastinating or avoiding something. I encourage clients to dig deeper on why they are procrastinating. If they never figure out what's really going on, they will likely procrastinate again. Maybe it's because you have clutter or are disorganized. Clear your clutter, hire a professional organizer to help you. You have underdeveloped decision-making skills, work with a coach or take a class, or that you fear success or failure, work with a therapist or a coach to dig deeper. Procrastination is a habit, but habits can be broken. I procrastinate, but have a plan in place. Make a list of rewards to motivate you. If I have to cold call, I enjoy a bubble bath afterwards. A good soak makes me feel secure and relaxed. It's just what I need to rejuvenate myself after an unpleasant task. Create your own rewards and then enjoy them. Such solid advice. I love that. And I always see people buried in their phones, not engaging during dinner and, and absolutely missing their life uh, while they're hooked on their electronics. So that's a great example of, of mental clutter. Do you have any examples on how you personally helped a client release mental clutter? Sure, I have a few. The first example I want to share is a client I'm working with now. She's very organized, but the craft area of her home has become out of control, what I would call extreme clutter, which I learned from you. We have started to declutter it. 
She shared with me that this had become her refuge where she would go to retreat. So in her mind, she equated extreme clutter with peace of mind. After our first session, one of her homework assignments was to find a new area of the home where she could relax and feel at ease because it was important to break that association of peace of mind with extreme clutter. I had another client who had anxiety on what to do if a client became unhappy. She was stuck in the future about what could happen. The first thing we did was to create a plan so she had clarity on what to do if the situation happened again. This included pausing, breathing, repeating the concerns back to the client so she understood why they were upset. This time allowed her to center herself and give her time to respond and not become overwhelmed or have a knee-jerk reaction. We also worked on her being in the present moment more. Wow, your clients are so lucky to have you with them. Thank you. I, I would hope so. Now, as an organizer, um, I have to be completely present in the moment. Um, how is not being present in the moment related to mental clutter? Excellent question. This is my favorite subject. I could talk about being in the present moment forever. In every moment, we have the choice to start fresh. Most of us spend the majority of our time living in the past or in the future. We are unaware because we're on autopilot as we have been functioning this way for so long. When we focus on the past or the future, how can we expect to change our lives? This realization allows us to no longer be held hostage or controlled by our past or future. How many times do you dwell on the past? If only I said, if only I did this, or worry about the future. What if this relationship doesn't work out? Have I saved enough for retirement? You lose your power when you're anywhere but the present. When you live in the present moment, it is truly a gift. Do you know where you spend the majority of your time? Is it the past, the present, or future? Do you often become angry, ruminating on, over past events? Perhaps learning better boundaries is a skill to transform anger into peace. If you're anxious about having enough money for retirement, can you skip the daily Starbucks to put it into savings? The present moment re represents our point of power because that's where we can take action to change. Spend 10 minutes a day noticing if you're in the past, present, or future. So much of our lives are spent on autopilot. Learn to become aware and break the habit. Is it possible to purge and then reorganize mental to physical clutter? Great question. And this is the first time I've been asked this. I say so. When it comes to releasing your mental clutter, awareness is the key in half the battle. I know I've mentioned that a couple times, but truly it's a key point. And Rachel, I think you would agree with this, with the work you do with your clients. Becoming aware is so important. You can't release it if you don't know what it is that you need to let go. Once you are aware of what needs to be replaced, you have to make a conscious effort to release it. For example, you become aware that a friend of yours causes you stress because she's always critical of you and doesn't support you. You feel exhausted after you meet with her. You have some choices. You can end the friendship. You can have an honest conversation with him or her about how they are stressing you out. Or you can manage the amount of time that you spend with them. Reorganizing your mental clutter. The reality is most of us will never get rid of all of our mental clutter, but we can learn how to manage it better. So I would probably use the word manage instead of reorganizing, but if reorganizing works for someone and helps you understand it better, then that's what you use. As I just mentioned, becoming aware of your mental clutter is a first step. It is also, also worth it to know what your triggers are and come up with a game plan to manage. The more mindful you become, the more you put into practice techniques to deal with your mental clutter. The easier it becomes to manage and it lessens. Things that used to get me crazy no longer affect me. I can tell you the last time I went, last, I went nuts and that was last fall. Something pretty significant had happened, but for the most part, I'm pretty even keeled. Started to organize and got stuck? Need questions answered or customized solutions? Looking for a professional organizer to bounce ideas? 
go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com to learn how Julie Caraccio can help. And do you have any specific tips on working through mental clutter? Are there any specific times of the day or any, anything that you have to be mindful of when you're working through mental clutter? I would say definitely not for time of day. Use it whenever you can fit it in. Now I'm going to encourage you to write it down on your to-do list because if we don't write things down, they tend not to get done. The best suggestion I have is to find a mindfulness practice. Almost every single day I do some type of practice. I can tell a huge difference when I don't, so it's part of my daily routine. I had surgery last fall and I was up at an un ungodly hour to make sure I meditated that day. There's no one size fits all. You know, you mentioned time. If you're a morning person, I'm going to encourage you to do it in the morning. If you're an evening person, do it then, but make it part of your routine. Maybe it's before, bed right after you wake up i'm going to offer some suggestions but have fun make a game out of trying new things if you're hesitant to get started make a list of all the benefits you'll receive and how it will help your mental clutter i'm a huge fan of meditation there are many different types you can try transcendental buddhist zen hindu etc ask any friends that meditate what form they use Google's your friend, so do some research. I tried a meditation once, I think it was Zen, and I couldn't do it. I had to sit on a pillow, my legs were tucked uncomfortably, and they told me to imagine a grain of rice in my mouth. It drove me crazy. It works for a lot of people, but it didn't work for me. Here are some meditation apps to check out. Relax Melodies, Buddhify, Meditation Timer Pro, Take a Break, and the Mindfulness app. Anything that gets you out of your head and into your body is also wonderful, like breath or movement. The ego has a job to do, but it also is the cause of your mental clutter. The ego is the one that fills you with doubt, even if your soul screams, I want to do this. Be present in what you do, folding the laundry, washing the dishes. Feel how the warm towels feel on your skin, the scent of the detergent. You cannot have two opposing thoughts at once. If you are engaged in what you're doing, you can't worry about the past or the future. Also, have gratitude. When you're in gratitude, you release your mental clutter. Listen to yourself throughout the day. Are you constantly complaining, focusing on what you don't have? Again, with two opposing thoughts, you can't have anxiety and be grateful at the same time. Oh my gosh, I just love that. I, I've recently read the uh, book called A Complaint-Free World. I don't know if you've heard of it. Mm -mm. Um, it's written by Will Bowen and it, it basically says just that. It's so amazing and you get so tuned into how often you complain, how everybody else complains. And, um, and I just love the idea of turning that somehow into gratitude. Um, and, and the science of it, of not being able to have the, the two conflicting thoughts at the same time makes it very nice. Um, I also love your idea of making lists to release mental clutter. A lot of the times people have their to-do list completely in their brains. And mm -hmm. so that's just a form of mental clutter and just writing everything out, uh, is so helpful. And meditating, of course, I absolutely love affirmations. And and I, I do the same thing when I'm cleaning. I like to really be in the moment. It's so relaxing, uh, gardening. There's so many different ways that people can spend their time doing something they enjoy and not having to be elsewhere in their mind. Absolutely. And like I said, have fun with it. Explore, make it a fun task and be like, oh, I have to have a mindfulness practice, you know, enjoy it. But I, 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 I say this with honesty. And I think if you talk to anyone who has a regular meditation, mindfulness practice, you know, I have a friend, classical music is how he relaxes, and that's his mindfulness practice. When I mow the lawn, I can be very present in the moment. So if you do something like that on a regular basis, you will notice a difference. For instance, if I'm cranky. I need to go and do my, my daily routine. I haven't done it yet. My schedule got kind of whacked out today. So I, my body is saying, okay, come on, Julie, it's time. And, and as I mentioned at one point, 
I don't get bent out of shape as I used to. Every little thing used to, I'd be like, Rrr, either angry or upset. It makes you more even keeled. You, you learn to not sweat the small stuff. Do you have any other special tips for anybody listening that's overwhelmed with mental clutter? Sure. Here, here are my thoughts. First, be aware of your mental clutter. Is it anxiety, obsessive thoughts? Do you have certain triggers like your mother-in-law or passive aggressive people? Start noticing what causes you to become frustrated or retreat into the past or run to the future. Two, practice self-kindness when working on reducing your mental clutter. Rome wasn't built in a day and you won't break these habits in one day. So be patient and gentle with yourself. With time and practice, you will put yourself on a path to living more fully. And number three, practice living in the present moment. The more aware you are, the more you will learn if you are in the past or present or future. Wear a rubber band on your wrist and snap it to bring you back into the moment. Or set a time every half hour to observe where your thoughts are. Remember, you are loved, you are worthy, and you can create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thank you, Julie. And I'm definitely going to try that rubber band trick. Um, I actually have a horn that I honk at people. It's, it's really bad. It's my son's bicycle horn. And every time there's negative self-talk and people apologize to me constantly about their home. And mm -hmm. the second they say, oh, I'm so sorry about the mess. I just honk. And... <laughs> I and love it really that. works. People stop and, and they're very aware of how often they're apologizing to me about, you know, the same thing over and over. So it's really helpful. The rubber band is kind of nice and someone can do it to themselves. I like the honking thing though. I think that's awesome. And I think you're so true because you're not going to change your life unless you recognize what's wrong. And so that really, that big sound really stops people in the moment to be like, wow, I didn't even realize I was saying that. And the more, again, the more aware you become, the easier it is to recognize. You know, we had um, Antonio jumped out the window, knocked the screen door out, and Antonio's our rescued black cat. And I was hysterical because I called my friend and I said, he's like, oh, the cats will be fine. They know not to. Well, Antonio didn't. So anyway, long story short, thank God he came back. But I was really, I was steamed at my friend for a couple days. And I was like, whoa, let's, let's reflect here a little bit. You're being mad at your friend when you took the action to have the window open. You, you made the choice to go to the gym and you trusted that Antonio wouldn't be a nut job. And so, but I was a victim. I was playing the victim. Oh, my friend told me it would be okay. And that's something I'm personally working on right now. I don't want to be a victim. So it, that was a more subtle way. But because I've worked continually to let go of feeling like a victim, I'm able to show, see it more easily and when it's more subtle. Well, thank you so much for your contribution to the podcast. I really enjoyed this interview and I look forward to having you on again. Thanks, Rachel. If people go to reawakenyourbrilliance.com, they can find out more information about me. All one word, reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Thanks. Take actions from today's podcast. Take time to figure out your mental clutter. Is it anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, frustration, fear, unclear goals or priorities? Whatever it is, it's okay. There's no judgment. And once you know, you can take action. Figure out your priorities. If you're not clear on what's important, you can be wasting your mental energy by focusing on insignificant things. Be aware of other mental clutter you carry. You can't release it if you don't know what it is that you need to let go. Once you're aware of what needs to be replaced, make a conscious effort to release it. Go out, clear the clutter, to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thanks for tuning in to Hordganize with Rachel Seavey. Listen every Sunday at 6 p.m. or watch on Collector Care's YouTube channel. Rachel is the owner of Collector Care Professional Organizers and Extreme Cleaners located in sunny Northern California. Her passion is helping those overwhelmed with clutter and she regularly speaks to families, 
local agencies, and the public about chronic disorganization and hoarding disorder. Her popular Affirmations for Collectors download can be found on iTunes or Amazon. Sign up for her blog and receive 7 tips for clutter-free living at CollectorCare.com. Ready to live a more joyful and fulfilling life? Sign up for our newsletter at reawakenyourbrilliance.com and receive a free copy of 10 Steps to Clearing Clutter Inside and Out. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. See you next Tuesday at 1pm.